Rub up your engines! This is a 2023 Honda HRV. Interesting enough, the guy went down to Florida to buy it. Why? This is Rhode Island here. Okay, they wanted more than $4,000 over MSRP here. So, he went to Florida and he got it for MSRP. So, not as good of a deal as the guy did with the Corolla that in Nashville, he saved 10 grand buying it in Colorado and took a trip and went skiing, came back to Nashville with a Corolla, but still, he saved money. These dealerships are all independently operated. They can do whatever the heck they want. And when they have a lot of people with a lot of money, like on the East Coast, they think nothing of ripping them off. Price around the country, like I say, all the dealerships are independently owned. They can do whatever the heck they want. They don't, you know, they don't own any car on the lot. They're all financed through the bank, just like you're financing. Well, at least most people. I pay cash for my cars, but I always buy old cars that have a lot of life in them for a very little bit of money. Now, in his case, it's not a compromise. If you see one of my other videos where the guy had the Mazda, same color, even look very similar, right? He bought the Mazda because of mainly price. He wanted quality, he was smart. He didn't buy any American or European crap. <laughs> he wanted a Japanese car, right? But he bought a Mazda for his fiance. And guess what he drove? A Toyota RAV4. <laughs> he didn't want to spend the extra 15 grand for a Toyota RAV4. So, now, in the case of these Hondas, they are quite a bit lower price than the actual RAV4s. Don't be fooled by their, in quotes, list prices. Go to a Toyota dealer and see what the drive-out price is, and you're going to be shocked. Last time somebody brought one over, they paid $47.5 for the thing. Two-wheel drive is perfectly fine for most people. You're going to pay a lot less money. You're going to get better gas mods. You're going to have less maintenance. To me, why waste money on all-wheel drive? Especially if you live in a place like Florida, you're driving on the roads. Even people here in Rhode Island, most of them say, we don't even put snow tires on our cars anymore. They don't care and they have got front wheel drive. Don't poo poo the front wheel drive cars. And we'll pop the hood. It's got a nice interior. And it's got a screen that's good because it doesn't block the view at all. Got a nice sunroof. He's got it open today. He did a nice job. Back seats are all clean. You can tell he doesn't have any kids yet. Really nice gray metallic paint job. See, he did his research. Because he's an Eagle Scout. And he's a Seminoles fan because he's going to school in Florida State. Now, the owner has one complaint. He says, it's really slow. Now, consider this. His previous car was an Audi 2.0-liter turbo. Now, the Audi 2.0-liter turbos are very fast cars. But as he found out, they fall apart like a Chinese motorcycle. So he got rid of the Audi and got this, and a friend of his kept the Audi, and she just spent eight grand on it, <laughs> having it maintained and repaired. So this is a Honda. I guarantee you, he's not going to spend eight grand on this. And if he bought another eight Hondas, he probably wouldn't spend it. Now, this is a non-turbo. So it's a natural aspirated engine. And it's a two-liter engine. So why is he complaining about pickup? The Audi was a two-liter engine, too. But the Audi had a turbocharger on it, German technology. These two Two liter engines that Honda makes. Yeah, it's a relatively heavy vehicle, right? You put this thing in a Civic, soup it up, zoom, zoom, zoom. But it's a bigger, heavier vehicle. But these two liter engines can last forever. I've seen them with half a million miles on them and they were still running strong. And yeah, with half a million miles, maybe they burn a quart of oil every couple of thousand miles. Big deal, oil's cheap. Engines are expensive and these things are well made. Just realize, no turbo, no extra pressure, engines will last longer. I mean, that's just a fact. To compare this with his previous Audi, Audi told them that it's normal to burn a quart of oil every thousand miles. When he had 60,000 miles on a car, it started burning oil. I mean, it's just bad quality. And a lot of them try to blame it on, well, by law, we have to use low friction compression rings on the pistons so they don't seal as well, and then they burn oil, blah, 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 blah. How come the Toyotas and the Hondas don't burn oil then? They just know how to make them, where companies like Audi, Ford, GM, Chrysler, they have no idea how to make them, and they all burn oil when they get old. Now, we'll take it for a little spin. Nice little sound, we'll start her up. And we'll turn the radio off, even though they're singing about Nashville. From other houses, we'll close the sunroof, so it'll be quiet. We'll see what it rides like. It does have electronic parking brake, but I mean, hey, they all do these days. Very nice widescreen backup camera, nice. Relatively high up in the air, so we'll go over the big bump here. We don't have to slow down too much. And away we go. You got both a digital and an analog speedometer. So you can go either where you want. We're going over the bumpy roads here, and it's not bad. Now, it's a relatively short wheelbase vehicle, so 
you're gonna feel some of the bumps, but hey, the struts are absorbing the shocks pretty well. Let's see what he's whining about lack of acceleration. You can see while we're waiting, it's got economy, snow. We'll put it on normal mode. Notice there isn't a sport mode. I guess they don't want you zooming around. We're gonna be waiting a while, it's lunchtime. People are coming on the left. No, people are coming from the right. All right, it's gonna be our chance to go. Here we go. Now, I don't call it horrible, but you compare this to an Audi with a dual clutch transmission and a two liter turbo, yeah, it's extremely slow. He was just used to the really fast one. Now, do realize this has a Honda CVT transmission in it. Now, Honda makes pretty good stuff. It's not like they break down, but truthfully, this transmission is not my cup of tea. I agree with the owner. It kind of makes the acceleration rather sluggish. We put it in low. Have it a little more zip but still not a fan of the cvt if you want zippiness this isn't the vehicle for you if you want transportation i'll get you from here to there for a long time this is probably a good bet for you it just got that kind of lag here we go again taking off all right right there it just doesn't have the get up and go of a regular transmission that has gears in it but it will get better gas mileage. And I mean, it gets 32 miles a gallon on the highway, which is good for an SUV. You just got the kind of lack of acceleration. I'd love to see something like a dual clutch transmission put in one of these. That would really give it some zip. But these are more or less transportation machines for people. So as the owner just said, and I agree, Honda didn't just make this as a car enthusiast vehicle. They made it as a really good transportation device. Honda has plenty of zooming away cars you can buy you get a civic type r if you want to be insane you know but they built this for people to get around in two liter non-turbo the things will probably last forever and if anybody goes back to their roots how do you think the japanese sold us a bunch of cars by making cars that were incrementally better over each year so they didn't break and as he said i got sick of fixing all my cars that broke all the time so he got this and he made a wise decision. This thing isn't gonna break down. Now, he is in Florida, so he's probably only about five feet above sea level. Another hurricane comes, it may float away, but uh, it's probably not gonna break down. They all look the same. This doesn't look much different than the Mazda or the Toyota or even a small Mercedes now. They all look the same. And if they're made with Honda quality, hey, don't waste your money on all wheel drive. Get a front wheel drive one like this. Hey, it'll get you where you're going for a really long time. And really, Honda's been building those two liter engines for a long time. Any day, I would rather have a two liter Honda engine than a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine because I know they won't last as long. Yeah, they're faster and yeah, 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 yeah. But for my money, the best engines Honda ever made were two liter inline fours. Just like I say with Toyota. Their best engine, as far as I'm concerned, because I'm a cheapskate, was their 1.8 inlines. I had a 1.8 inline in my Corolla SR5 hatchback. I had a 1.8 liter in my 94 Celica. I got a 1.8 liter four-cylinder in my Weiss Matrix. That's Toyota's bread and butter for things that are going to last a long time. And the two liters in Hondas, hey, you can't go wrong if you want something that's going to last a really long time with very little maintenance. A guy brought me a Honda 2 liter a month ago. He bought it used for two grand. It had almost 200,000 miles on it. The thing ran almost like a brand new vehicle because it didn't have a turbo. It had the Honda 2 liter engines. These things can run forever. And in the case of this, the guy didn't make a compromise like the guy with the Mazda did that, gee, I would have liked the RAV4, but they cost so much more. 15 grand more, I'll get this Mazda CX-5 instead, right? This, the only compromise he made was speed. And he's getting older and wiser. So he's realizing, maybe I don't need all that speed anymore. I'll go for comfort, nice looking car that can get good gas mileage, last a long time. And all you gotta basically do is change the oil and filter every 5,000 miles. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.